Hello, welcome to the second video looking at derivatives of log functions. In this video, we introduce logarithmic differentiation. It's a combination between implicit differentiation and using natural logs. All right, we're going to have it used for two main purposes. This first slide, the purpose is going to be able to take the derivative of a function raised to a function. Okay. And so here are the steps. Basically, we end up taking the natural log of both sides, and then we differentiate implicitly. And then we solve for y prime. Three steps. All right. So we have our example is going to be y equals root x to the x. You can't do the power rule. You can't bring that x down and then take it to the x minus 1. That's if you have a x who's raised to a number. We've seen how to take the derivative of x to a number. We've seen how to take the, the, a number raised to x. Um, if we have a number raised to a number, it's, it's a constant, so its derivative is 0. And now we have a function raised to a function, and we're learning how to take this derivative now by starting off with taking the natural log of both sides. Let's first simplify it. Um, x to the underneath a root is x raised to the half. And then if you have something that's raised to a power, then raised to another power, you can multiply those exponents. So x then is raised to the one half x. This is our function, and we're going to take the natural log of both sides, allowing us to employ the property of logs, which says that you can take the exponent and bring it down in front. And now we execute implicit differentiation. Derivative to the left, derivative to the right. Whenever we encounter a term with y in it, we take its derivative, but we put the y prime on it, multiply it, because of the chain rule. Even though this function could be written explicitly, we're going to treat it as if it's, if it's not. And we're going to be able to take the derivative to the left, get 1 over y, y prime. And when it comes to taking the derivative to the right, we have a product rule. Derivative of the first, 1 half, times the second, natural log of x, plus the first, 1 half x, times the derivative of the second, and we learn natural log of x's derivative is 1 over x. We're almost done. We're trying to find y prime. We just have to multiply by y. And then we'll have it. We could simplify it. The, the x's cancel nicely on the right-hand side. So it'll be um, 1 half of log x plus a half. We multiply by y, and we're done. You don't want to have the y involved, so just put the original version of the problem back in. y was equal to x to the half x. And you have it. y prime is equal to the original function times this product rule result of the exponent and the function, of the, and the natural log of the function. And so in general, if you have f of x who's raised to the g of x, your derivative is equal to the function times the derivative of the product of the exponent and the natural log of the base. Is that the right number of parentheses? One, two, three. I don't know. There might be one extra parentheses. I don't know. I think it's good. <laughs> All right. Now, that's purpose number one. Now, let's look at purpose number two for logarithmic differentiation. Purpose number two is if you have this function who is a fraction of a product of a bunch of other functions. Logarithmic, logarithmic differentiation comes in to help us with that. The same process. Okay, here's our example. 36 x to the log x over x squared, x plus 1, x plus 2. Just a whole bunch of functions all multiplied together. Our job, take its derivative. We're going to plug a 1 into its derivative. All right. So here's how it works. We'll start off by taking a natural log of both sides. It's going to be very helpful here. You see, it was helpful in the last one because of the property of logs, which lets you bring the guy out the exponent. It's helpful in this one because of the property of logs, which lets you break up a product and a, and, and a, and a fraction into many logs. It's one single log, and we're going to break it into multiple logs. 
So we'll have the natural log of 36 plus the natural log of, of uh, x to the log x minus the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of x plus 1 minus the natural log of x plus 2. Those are the guys there. The minuses end up on the bottom. Now, us breaking this up into simpler parts makes it easier to take its derivative. So in executing the implicit differentiation, we take the derivative of the left-hand side, 1 over y, y prime again. And now it's our job to take the derivative of the right-hand side, now that we've broken it up. Log of 3, 36 is a constant. Zero derivative there. Log of x to the log x. We can bring that exponent down. It's actually log x times log x. I say log, I mean natural log. It's actually natural log of x quantity squared. Okay. And then we have the natural log of x squared minus natural log of x. So we, take, we can take those derivatives easily. The natural log of x plus 1, 1 over x plus 1. The natural log of x plus 2 is derivative, 1 over x plus 2. Um, when it comes to the natural log of x squared's derivative, we're going to bring the 2 down in front and deal with the derivative of 2 log x. We're going to bring this natural log of x down in front for the second term there and take the derivative of the natural log of x times natural log of x, or a better way to say it, ln of x quantity squared. That's not the same thing. You can't bring that 2 down in front there. The natural log of x quantity squared is different than the natural log of x squared. Okay. So uh, we'll bring the 2 down as far as the chain rule goes. Take ln x to the first power and then multiply by ln x's derivative, who is 1 over x. And then the, the other term, the third term that's there, derivative of 2 log x, that's 2 times 1 over x. I have them simplified here. So 2 log x over x minus 2 over x and then minus the 1 over x plus 1 and minus the 1 over x plus 2. That represents the derivative of the right-hand side. And just like before, our derivative, y prime, is equal to y times that derivative. We'll go to the next slide and do the calculation. Remember to put in the replacement to what y was so that you don't have a y in your derivative. So just like before, your derivative is going to be your original function times the derivative of your fraction with a natural log on it. And then the natural log allowed us to break it up into many pieces and take those individual derivatives. Okay, great. So our job is to find f prime at 1. When x is equal to 1, let's find what y is. We'll put a 1 in. 1 raised to the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So 1 raised to the 0, that's a 1. This numerator is 36. It's divided by a 6, a 1 times a 2 times a 3. So our function, original function, when we plug a 1 in, we end up with 36 over 6. Or 6. This other part, natural log of 1 is 0. So that first part goes away. And then we put 1s in these denominators. We have a minus a 2, a minus a half, and a minus a third. And the first term's a 6. We should distribute. Well, the minus 2 and the minus a half. They end up as minus 5 halves, like minus 4 halves and minus 1 half. You could put those two together nicely. The minus 5 halves and a minus 1 third, you could put those together too. But let's go ahead and distribute the 6. We'll have a negative 15 and a negative 2. The derivative at 1 is negative 17. It was a tough question. But so there's power in being able to use the natural log and its properties. So now we know how to take the derivative of a function who's raised to a function, and we know how to take the derivative of a function who has multiple products in the numerator and the denominator.
Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer, and I um, am happy to help you. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.